tell you a little bit about myself. I was in my mother's stomach. And before I came out, I already felt all the drama. I felt my mother running into a bar while I'm in her stomach. I felt her fighting with my father, trying to pull him out of a bar. He's getting fucked up, chasing women. I felt all this while I was still in her stomach, before I even came out. Yep, I yep, I homeboy. That's the nigga low G. Putting it down for the Nina 8. We give him some hot, but we did this quick. So don't trip if you forgot your click. in my hustle town come around fuck them down with my underground puffing power wild clouds in my tp with my hyena hollering release me prime time like shines on the high minds hellified rhymes huh uh, my name is sylvia coy and i am booking and promotions for dope house records coy entertainment and uh how are you related to south park south park mexican is my brother um well, yeah what was what was carlos like when he was young Oh, South Park Mexican was uh, was an active child, very active. You know, I'm his older sister, so I remember uh, from the very from the very day he was born, uh, he was uh, just uh, very personable, very active, uh, very talented. Uh, I would say somewhat of a child prodigy. He started playing the violin when he was about five years old. Uh, just a very quick learner. Uh, he was, he was a great guy. He was just uh, the, the, a leader, so to speak. Uh, he, w he was the sort of leader of the gang, you know. And, and there was, a, there was a, a, quite a few kids on the block at the time, so he was definitely the leader. I think that history will show that he will eventually become a major, major influence in the Houston rap scene. You know, they, they, the industry or the scene goes in cycles, and I think 10, 12 years ago, when Rap-A-Lot was coming up, they started to make moves and waves, and they elevated the scene to a certain level. They took it to a national level, the Houston rap scene, uh, uh, Rap-A-Lot did. And then I think now the young guns are coming up, the young Turks are coming up, Carlos leading the way, and I think he's going to uh, broaden it and expand it across cultural lines and take it to another level. Uh, with, what he, with what he's doing now, with venturing into, into movies and, and touring so heavily, which is not usual for rap groups, Touring so heavily and building and working so hard in promotions and working on his image, I think he is setting new standards and breaking new ground for uh, rappers on the scene now and for people coming up behind him. I think he's going to break break lots of ground, lots of new ground. He's going to break barriers. He's going to set new standards. Uh, Carlos called me one night. He said, uh, "You know, shout out, I'm gonna I'm 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 start rapping." And I was like, "Man, for real? I didn't really didn't believe him because knowing Carlos back in the days, you know, not that he wouldn't, you know, to do what he didn't say he would do, you know what I'm saying? But you know, it was just like like rapping to me was like I was wondering, you know, Carlos gonna rap? You know what I'm saying? I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know, like yeah, go for it, dude. Next time I saw him, it was the night that we was recording, making the matter worse." And he had came over to my brother's house, which was this little bitty ass house. It was like real small economy, one efficient room, you know what I mean? Uh, my brother was uh, written in the back of somebody's house. And Carlos came over there and he started rapping. It was the first time I heard him rap. 
And his voice was the first thing that 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 freaked me out because it just turned my head. You know what I mean? Just because of the way he was rhyming at the time, the the voice was so different. You know the way he does his voice. Uh, so I just started looking at him. You know, and, and 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 it was his normal voice, but it was at a higher pitch, and it it just you know it just I just heard it, and it just caught my attention. And ever since then, I've heard that voice in his music, and. Uh, Somehow or another, with his music, he he makes his music himself. You know what I'm saying? He's done that, all the keys on Hustle Town. He did all the keys himself. I was there, man. I was watching him, and Fleta was living with him at the time, and Fleta was helping him as far as the, the drums, you know, and the beats, as far as what I know. You know what I'm saying? And and uh, and uh, Carlos was making his his uh, keyboards harmonize with his voice, and that that's what I like about his music right there. You want to ask a question? I'm sorry, it's a long answer, but that's for real.
motherfucker talking shit, he want the beat down. I break the MC with the fucking compound when they be coming around. Motherfucker, motherfucker around, listen to the goddamn sound. Check it. I like the fusil that be coming missile picked it up in the matrix because my lyrical phone they picked it. Ah. Uh, Rough up on the blunt. Ah. So Smoke this shit every day of the month. Ah. Don't have to lick the fucking cunt. But the wheel turn the bitch over and fuck her with some raw stunts. Ha ah, ha Don't fuck with me, I ripped the ass. Having a couple of pop of me screaming, whip lash! Nigga, understand I whip my nigga balls hold. The motherfucker salty water clicks, you still like a log. We breaking fools off, got to feel my shit. The fucking beat's going off. Play your haters, suck my dick. And then of course, we're gonna, we're showing up the Bay Area, San Francisco, all the way up to Washington, and then of course, you know, Los Angeles and the... Uh, and then, uh, you know, Phoenix and Arizona. What's up, Tom? What's up? What's up? What kind of other scams did you guys use? Oh, we sold cars. We sold cars. We sold fake We We had all. We cooked some counters. The counters with the bird gel on it. Put the bird gel on it and the paper bag and some dope and Oh, this is straight up hustle. Our name ain't here with hustlers for nothing. You know how to survive. I don't know. Call up the hustle. Call up the Nothing pays by. He bought everything. And Odessa, Midland, those are really good cities. Um, then uh, we can come up to Oklahoma. We got a lot of love in Oklahoma. We got a lot of love in Wichita, Kansas. A lot of love in Kansas City. Hey, sir. Uh, we need to run up, run up that way. You know, we need to set up a nice tour for us. You know, and uh, I, we, uh, we really need to write that up and get that going because. Uh, I'm still working on the The ball is black. I wake up early in the morning, late to rise. Look in the eyes, look at my wife. I stick my dick up in between the thighs. Look at my daughter, then I'm gone, up in the moan. Sometimes I wish a nigga really wasn't ever bone. Somebody help me, cause I'm living up in this pain. Brother, what to maintain? Getting hit by this fucking train. You see these coppers with choppers watching these poppers. Coming with critters, I fuck them up with the one hitters. Now I'm gonna meet you, got to the ride, watch that shit when it comes to the set. Gotta keep it cool with them, I'm out. Up in Tibet, Chinese coming with other weeds, keeping the knees. When the fuck I click, nigga, please keep it real. Now, what the fuck they gonna do with my retaliation? Taking the validation, situation, discrimination. Bringing my shit to the mantle, when I break a motherfucker down. Bitch, it's time to change the channel. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Are you proud of your brother? Yeah, I'm very proud of him. Uh, he's accomplished something that. That one in a million that do. I mean, I'm very proud of him. Uh, I've been proud of him for a long time, ever since he was a kid. You know, he was top chair in violin, and he's a great baseball player too. So I'm, I'm very proud of him. Uh, I mean, <laughs> how many people have brothers that 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 you know that have reached reached the level he's reached in music? You know, so um, yeah, I'm very proud of him. Uh, what's the difference between old Carlos? An SPM rapper Carlos, like the street hustler Carlos and the, the rapper SPM. Uh, he's he hasn't changed. His personality hasn't changed that much. As a matter of fact, I've learned a lot about him as a business partner. I've never had him. I mean, I never knew him as a business person. I've always known him as you know street kid, whatever. But now, uh, as a businessman, he turned out to be a hell of a businessman. He uh. Surprise the hell out of me. But as far as his personality changed, nothing's changed. He's just, he's the same old car as he's always been, except now he's got a lot of money. <laughs> That's the only thing I can, the only difference I can think of. Hmm. Man, the hardest working man in the rap scene. You know, I've been with him since he first started doing this, setting his tape out the car, the trunk, walking up to the box van, trying to get on the air for a second, all at the club setting, you know. This is the hardest working man. You look at all the hard work that paid off after a couple of years of, I think about four years working hard, hitting the streets, beating the streets up. You know what I'm saying? Like the man say, this is the dope house. Dope sell itself, you know? I really didn't believe it. I'm, I'm telling you, I didn't believe it. But as far as being a hustler, man, he, he I, will say, I will say this, man. He's proved to me and he's, he, he's proved to a lot of people, man. And he showed a lot of people that that's what it takes. It's hustle. Cause that's, that's what he did, man. From day one, that's all he did was hustle. Nigga, I mean, you're talking about somebody who uh, bought a few tape, few thousand tapes, just like everybody else did, like I did, like everybody else. But I wanted to go straight to the, uh, 
straight to uh, Southwest Wholesale and distribute and put on the shelf. You know, I tried to take it from that angle because I had, a, you know, I had a lot, some money and I thought I had enough to make a company and that's where I was looking at it from. But uh, I give it to Carlos, man. Even though I did a little trunk here and there, that boy took the trunk, you know, selling out the trunk to another level, man. That That's just, you know, from that point, I mean, and you just, just take it from there. From That's A, that's part A, and he's taking it to, he's on his way to Z, man. And I don't know what he's going to do after Z. I guess he's going to go into double letters or, or double letters and digits, or he'll be probably be like license plates or something, got some code going, because that's all he does, man, is hustle, man. Selling tapes in the restrooms at car shows, man. I'm, I'm sure many told, people tell you that story. <laughs> Hanging a poster up in the restroom and be Carlos, he talk a lot of sense to me because he calmed down a lot quicker than me, you know, and shit, even sometimes today, me and him would take a ride, man. He let me know, slow down my road, you know what I'm saying? I've been putting it down a long time in the rap game, but, man, tripping, man. What's that question again? Off of mine. Oh, yeah, low rider scene, man. They love him. Oh, that's what I was trying to get to because this is what he told me. He said, man, we need a leader, IKE. We need a leader, man. You know, back in the day, it was grim, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, she, you know, Graham got to handle his business, you know, got to start feeding the family, man. People do certain things, you know what I'm saying? Bam, you know what I'm saying? Now it's South Park, Michigan, you know what I'm saying? He's blowing up, man. He's holding it down for the Michigans, man. I'm glad it's him. There's somebody else, you know what I mean? I don't think he classified as Mexican rap. I think Mexican rap is that stuff you see on Telemundo. They ain't be like, you aquí, we pa' allá. That's Mexican rap, but rap is rap. You can't. Rap is just rap, man. It's hard to, to to label it. Mexican rap or black rap or rap is rap, dude. So that's the way I feel about rap. As long as you can do it, it's cool. Like my comment, they say, how do you feel about being a Mexican comedian? I'm like, fucker, I'm a comedian. I'm just a comic. Can I say fucker on here? Sure. Okay, cool. Fucker. <laughs> no, we're trying to ask a question. Okay. A rapper, yeah. You know, Mitha's gonna say, it's about time for our people, I'm glad. <laughs> he's gonna wear a poncho and a fucking, he's gonna get a big old horse on his limo and <laughs> a bull on the door and shit. People like Carlos because he does his music to satisfy everyone. He doesn't just pick one certain crowd. He does it in two different languages, which is very good. And you know, he's trying to sell internationally very very well he's selling very well now he's just trying to add one more very to it you know he i mean it's it's no way that um no other person can talk down on carlos for what he has done as one person an individual i think he's popular because you know everybody can relate to what he's talking about the crack slangers the crack heads the hip-hop heads you know what i'm saying uh the thugs the ballers you know, you can relate, you know, that's what people want to hear. They want to hear something that they can relate to. And I think he, he does, you know, a very good job of delivering that. Yeah. Southern street shit, putting it down, Keeping just it real. real true Keeping shit real. in the most solid form, you know what I'm saying? H-Town true shit. Southern. South Park Mexican. Southern. South Park Mexican. He's a hustler, straight up. 
H Town to me, Carlos has made me realize that H Town stands for Hustle Town with a guy named Carlos in, in the city. He's a he's he he basically took the southeast type mentality with the South Park type, uh, you know, uh, bring up the, the way the way he put it together is the way the way he hustles, man. And uh, uh, he he that's just straight up. He you see him back in the days. You see him in the back of a uh, in, in 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 a restroom selling his CDs, having a, a you know some headphones letting you listen to what he was talking about. You know what he was saying. And then he was fronting you and saying, you know, check this out, bro. You know, and and if you like it, buy it. You know, five dollars. You know, what I'm saying whatever. He had cassettes back in them days, and he was doing that. People was kicking him out of clubs. So the managers was just telling him, you know, you got to go. You know what I'm saying? And he'd come right back, man. And he'd be back right there, back in that, in that uh, uh, restroom, just selling his tape CD. Wherever, Astro Arena, he was out. He was out the lowrider shows. They kicked him out of there. He go on another door. Kick him out of East door. He come in the West. And he's. That's why I think he makes so much. Uh, uh, it makes it makes so much money for him because you know what I'm saying. His prize is is, is 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 unreachable. You know what I'm saying? He sets his, his goals real high, so it's it's really no limit to what he can do, as far as uh, the industry. Because he's just selling it. He's selling crack, you know. And these you know these these youngsters, you know what I'm saying? These these older folks, you know what I'm saying? They they jamming it and they listening to it. You know he's got he's got music for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Really, what it is, you know, it's it's crack. You know, it's addicted. You know, it. If you can't if you can't afford it, you'll hear your homeboy. Man, it's so addicted you'll try to steal it. Oh, that was a that was a well, to me that was a great experience. Uh, I felt proud that we were able to do something like that for one thing. Uh, I mean, just a year or two ago, I would have never thought that had been possible. But uh, it was a great experience to see you know, that going on. I've never seen nothing like that live. You know, just uh, see see my brother on camera and uh, the whole thing taking place before me. Seeing how you guys do that. Uh, it was just it was just amazing you make me feel you put a spell on me with the green voodoo you love when my boys come and run us a choo choo Mary Jane deep in the game the way I feel words can't explain you've been true to me stood by my side I wake up and get my mornings first high other wonder why they get no love cuz Mary got a big old wood huh Mary go Right here. This is good for what? Nothing. <laughs> good for 
great i mean who can imagine going to a concert and there's six or seven hundred women there and they all know who you are and there's only like five or six of y'all i mean there's a hundred to each one of us i mean it's great when you can go to a city and so many people know you and they know you by name and they just honestly i mean they pretty much do whatever you want <laughs> when you have your hotel room full of about five or six women i mean who can resist you know, a very lovely woman. I mean, yeah, it's very hard. I, I don't want to say too much. I mean, I don't want to get too much trouble, but it's great. I mean, who can resist it? They say, can you at least put it above five? Eight? Don't go past eight. And then, then also I need you to do is look for the pocket. to be the way we are. We don't like to be any kind of other way. I mean, you just like, dude, he's like. They're like, Carlos, you like cool. Yes, we are. <laughs> Everybody loves that about us. Everybody loves the real shit, fellas. Let's not forget that. I Happy Betters. I am a producer. I produce such shit as, like, how you do that. I was fucking platinum at 18, gold at 19. Now I'm around here fucking around with the dope house, getting to put some shit down with my homeboy South Park Metro, you know? How come it gets no radio play? Reason why I think South Park Metro don't get no radio play because 
fuck. I don't know. Them bitches just be hating sometimes, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know. Really don't know what the fuck, you know what I'm saying? But fuck them because the shit's still selling. And it's going to keep selling. You know? when he used to uh, <laughs> he drive to the club and his little hoop, he had a little festiva, a little white festiva. We go, it's about 50 cassettes each, and he tell me, Dre, hit that side of the parking lot, and I'll hit that side of the parking lot. I'll be so embarrassed, I, I ain't gonna lie, I'll be like, man, hold on. <laughs> and I used to see him out there, you know, come on, come on, show Mexican some love, you gotta show Mexican some love. Come on, man. Pump, pump my tape, baby. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. And they would, you know. The brothers would play it. Uh, how much you selling them for? I sell you five dollars. I always stop. I'm gonna keep the ghost now. You got the answer. You want to stay here. One time, me and Carlos, we was at Just Joking Comedy Stop on Richmond. And uh, I remember one time, uh, <laughs> there was, there was uh, every, it went quiet in the club. The DJ had screwed up for a second. And me and Carlos were at this table, which was me and him by ourselves. And he started mouthing off saying, yeah, what the fuck, y'all can't fix this shit or what? <laughs> And some brother from over in the club, and it was real dark, may I say, it was real dark. Some brother from, from over in the club said, uh, why don't you shut up? Or I'll come over there and make it. And Carlos turned it into a rhyme. He said, he told me to shut up, but I still don't give a fuck. I keep it kind of I will never forget that day, man. He had the whole club going. Before you know it, they were applauding him, and and it was just, it was, it was just really incredible what he did with that incident. You know, amazed me. That's when I realized he is a clever artist and very artistic in his way. Very artistic. You know what I'm saying? Uh, any 
last words? Anything you want to say, Jay? Yo, SPM, I'm proud of you. I've seen you do it since 1995, baby. Take it all the way. Because you deserve it. You worked hard for it, and now you're here, baby. You're on the way. You're on the ride. Dre Black, baby. Who buys South Park Mexican and most hated, and most hated albums? Uh, people who uh, who jam uh, Fat Pat, people who jam Kiki, people who jam Street Military, the same old people. Uh, our fan base though is, is a lot of, uh, of course a lot of Latins regardless, but south, the whole south side of Houston, basically the southeast side, uh, Victoria, San Antonio, Austin, Galveston, Freeport, Angleton, our fan base, uh, Dallas, El Paso, Odessa, uh, man, just all over the Southwest region, really. Where, wherever we go and promote our stuff, that's where it's going to sell at. Wherever we go and, and show them what's up and let them listen to it, that's where it's going to sell at. That's where the fan base is, Where we go and push it. Cool. Tell me your funniest story about Carlos. A funny story about Carlos? Oh, man. <laughs> Hold him up, man. Let me see. A funny story. I don't really know what's considered funny with him. Something legal. Legal? All right. One time, uh, something that's funny with Lowe's. This is what happened, man. I ain't gonna lie. This is one of the times, besides going to jail with him, he done got me in trouble going to jail with the man after, after, uh, after a late night with the club one time, you know, we swinging through the hood and log pull us over. I got warrants at that time. He got warrants. Both of us went to jail. So we in the jail cell. About a day later, I see him, you know what I'm saying, on the other side of the tank. What's up? You one got me locked up. What's up? You can't get me out? He can't even get himself out, though. But another time is that's real funny, though, was one time, I ain't gonna lie, I don't know what we was doing. One late night, I don't know what we was doing. I don't even remember. We had, uh, we had woke up, man, we was at a stoplight in this little white car, little white festival here, a little white car. Everybody knows about that white car. You know what I'm talking about. We woke up about 4 in the morning, man, in a, in a, in a red light. You know what I'm saying? About just sleeping, man. We woke up real late. Lars woke us up. Bam, bam, bam. What y'all doing? Handcuffed us. We gone. You know what I'm saying? It was late in the night. We woke up at that red light, passed out, man. Went to jail and shit. That was about as funny as it gets, man. But it wasn't funny at the time, though. The, the love is, 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 is really uh, tremendous that, that I get being in this environment, you know what I mean? Uh, Mexican, you know, he, he taught me some things, he showed me some things, you know, about life pretty much what's important. And uh, people around here, man, they just, they just show me so much love, man. You know, uh, I, can't, I can't sleep. You know what I mean? So, love, man. It's love. Well, uh, I, I give you three quick things. Um, you know, one of the things was the uh, the hard working thing. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, it, 
not so much as the hard work. I had the hard work in me, but how to execute what I wanted to do in this music as a hard worker and not somebody that's just, you know, got the paper and just get out there and do it. Another thing on the personal side, you know, he kind of explained to me about, you know, letting my children learn how to earn and survive, you know, as a uh, you know, human being, a strong person, and don't try to give them everything, you know, make them, you know, earn what they got. And third thing, you know, uh, I learned is that you don't always have to be a fast rapper to sell a lot of albums. Keep it clear, baby. Keep it clear. Baby. My stage name, as far as with the set, with the rap, and how it's been going for the past eight or so years, I've, I've been known as uh, Grim. And uh, that got started, my brother started calling me Grim because I used to write dark poems in, uh, in high school. And uh, I, think he got, I think he got the idea from like Brothers Grim. Uh, so he was Shadow, and I guess he just wanted to put that little, little feel in it. So yeah, he started calling me that. But back in the days, I was just writing poetry. And then when I started rapping with the uh, South Park Coalition, uh, uh, you know, I had the name and it just went from there. I don't think I don't think he's gonna he feels like he's gonna be famous. I don't think he, he feels that uh I don't think he's looking for fame. I don't think he uh I think what he's what he's looking to do is, is to continue to work. Uh I, I think he sees it as part of the package and I know that he's he, he's aware of the fame. But I don't think that's what he's what he's looking at. So I don't think that it's going to go to his head because uh, it's it's not one of the, the factors that he's putting in, in in the puzzle. So being famous to him, it, it, I, I really knowing Carlos the way I do, it's it's not really what he's looking at. It's not what he's wanting. It's not what he's for. He's really doing it for his people. He's doing it because he likes to rhyme, and he's doing it because he can. And he's got the means. He's and and one thing I want to put into, in, in in with that is because of. The one thing that sets South Park aside from all that, you know, I think that brings him down to earth, you know, about the fame and all that, is because he's surrounded by his family in his business. You know, he's got his sister working for him. He's got his dad all the way around him. He's got Tootie, his brother, always around him. It, it, his mom is, <laughs> you know, cooking up a storm whenever we do shows or whenever we do anything. Um, and she's doing her part and doing her, and she sells it too. You know, don't get me wrong. She's out there, she's, she's making her money too. They're all making that money, you know, so. Being surrounded by people, I don't think they would they would allow him to uh, to to even get a big head if he started getting famous. I think I think one thing about Carlos though is that uh, he, he's got he's got an ego which is good. You're supposed to have an ego in this business because if you don't, you're pretty much soft is what they say in this ego. And and I think he's really good with his ego. He's got a very healthy ego. And I think that would be the most of his fame of, of him showing himself being famous is his ego, you know, which is great.
We all are. We all are. We all are. In so many ways. Right, right. so many ways. He'll go and lead in a rapper. Rap all us, all us so dope. All us so dope around here. I know this man he never sold no dope. He ain't never sold no dope in his life. But I can say, uh, all, hey. We did We that. did, we did our dirt. Carlos did his dirt. Nah. He a rapper, man. He a rapper. And we working people right now. <laughs> He real with what he talk about. Everything this man saw Fork talk about, he's so real with it so the fans got to feel where he coming from. They feel this pain. They feel what he's going through. They see the streets, the things that are happening around him in the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? Stuff that he's screaming on his record. South Park is happening. Houston is happening. And your city is happening. It doesn't make a difference where. It's just going down, you know? Whatever we talk about, it's happening in every major city. <laughs> Carlos, Carlos will wait till like, probably about when the store closed. Yeah, when the store closed. He just walk around. Everybody else gone. He got the whole neighborhood to himself. You got to buy what he's selling because where you going to go? Ain't too yeah. many places you can go because everybody gone. He the one outside till about 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. Shit. Yeah, me and Carlos basically started selling dope together, you know, and he made him up some little hundred dollar packages <laughs> <laughs> wrapped up in uh, uh, school paper. Yeah. And when the store closed, he'd be the only one with it. We'd be out all the times of night, late at night, trying to stack that grip, you know, trying to have things. Had cars, all of us had cars at young age. So, you know, he was a night hustler, you know, but he, he's, he's a true hustler to the game. Yeah, straight up hustler to the game. You know what he's doing, man. I like the way he's doing it now, though. I like it better. Tell me about Carlos as an artist. Me, personally, I think of him as an artist, he's good. He's a good rapper. And, you know, I'm glad for his success today because he deserves it. Yeah, because he, right yeah, he always told me, man, he said, here the man, I'm going to make it, man. And, you know, I was like, man, just keep trying, man. He used to write his little lyrics, and he always say he's going to try it. And I remember his brother, when he first started off, his, his oldest brother, Tootie, invested a lot of money in Carlos. And I think it, you know, it didn't go good with him. But he, he kept going, he kept striving, and he, he kept going. Like yeah, like yeah. Carlos, Carlos <clears throat> a type of person, he'll a, he a positive person. But he, he, he's not no dummy, he's real smart. Yeah. Whatever he say he gonna do, he gonna sit there and plan it out, and he gonna try to do it. He gonna try to be the best at whatever he gonna do. So he picked out rapping, so he stuck with it, and he knew he had skills. He, I even told him he had skills, because I used to sit there and listen to him, rap to me all night long. And I'm not no rapper. I used to tell him, man, just go for what you know, man. You know, and he did it, and he got the success he got today. I see him being platinum. Yeah. I see him platinum by the end of this year. That's I want to see him see platinum. Him. He, got, he got to go platinum. Man, I see it platinum. It's much love He's taking care of business, man. He, he got a head on the shoulder, just like selling dope in it. <laughs> yeah. That's just it. Just selling a different dope. That's, that's, that's how it is. The more you instead get, the you more sell money. It, instead of you selling ounces, you selling CDs. Yeah. The, the more, more CDs the more you CDs, sell, the more, the more money you make. It's all, just, just like, like the more that. ounces you sell, the more money you make. That's it. Straight up like the dope, man. So, you know what I'm saying? When did you know Carlos was going to make it? When he first started. Because he, he sold his tapes himself. His, every little event came up, he was there with his tapes. I he, knew. Okay, he I get him you. a booth, whatever. He just, you know, wh whatever he put his mind to, he going to do it. He going to do it. And he going to try and be the best at it. I so knew uh, 
Carlos was going to make it when he had talked to somebody who wanted to sign him. They offered him like $250,000 signing bonus. And he had turned it down. And I told him, man, you crazy. You turned it down? And he told me, he said, he was not going to rap. I'm going to have my own company like that there. And after I heard a couple of his tapes and, you know, seen him do a couple of shows, see how the fans just love him, I knew he was going to make it. I've been knowing he was going to make it. And he ain't through with him either. He still got a lot to give him. Yeah. He gonna go platinum. Now spread the word, I got them bricks on the dead end street. And watch them jump out, boys, cause they rolling 10 deep. Creepy crawl in the night, y'all know the deal. On the motherfucking hill, we all strapped to kill. Chill, hitting licks in the wind, it never ceases. Getting mad, cause they asking me for three dollar pieces. How the fuck I supposed to come up? Off a shite move Run up on the 20 and come get your ass in ice cube It ain't nothing why you bumping in your cutlass Just understand the roughness Never cut for the gutless Cause it's do or die, you ask Who am I? That mama heartbreaker ever since junior high In the eye of the public The brown be the suspect So the streets taught me to be loveless Causing ruckus in the dope fiend's bucket My two favorite subjects was duck it and fuck it The night shift Young hustlers work in graveyards The night shift Street soldiers work in graveyards The third album, which is Parmos, is it's some real crack. And, I mean, it's so special that, that uh, no one else, no one else will give you a free CD with your CD. I mean, I don't care who you are. I mean, they could probably give you a bonus CD, but not a free DJ Screw CD. I mean, that shit is so addicted that everybody in the South is so screwed up. Screwed up, baby, you know. You know, just leaning. And um, that's how special it is, you know. Uh, he's he's coming out with the nerd, the, the new third wish. Uh, it's real. It's 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 some high stuff. It's it's it's, it's once again crack itself. Basically, Chief, um, you know, what Rashid want to say is, uh, reap what you sow. And I, pr I pretty much work hard in this game for where I'm at, what I got. And, uh, I love life, man. I love people. And people love me. And that's positive. And I'm glad that at this point in my life I can say that. You know, I've been to jail, I've been to prison, I've been locked down. And, uh, for some reason, I learned to overcome that, man, and and I'm here. And it's all because you had, you know, you had to just reach deep within yourself and find out, you know, what it is that 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 may be stopping you from being what you want to be, going where you want to go, or uh, just living the peaceful life, you know. And uh, I just said that to say, you know, just look in the mirror, man, take the time, and find out what you want to do, where you want to go, you could do it. Chief Rashid, baby. First degree, Dope House Records. I'm out of here. By the way, this is just a cigarette. Buglers. I roll it up in tobacco, fine tobacco. But, um... I don't want the kids to think that I... And I don't inhale, look. Don't inhale at all. It's just a thing, I'm just trying to be cool, you know. But really, I'm starting to realize that I'm not being cool by smoking. Only thing that's happening is I'm getting less done. My teeth are getting more yellow and my lungs are getting more black. It ain't worth the shit. Remember that. Sapphire Mexican. 
That started back in 82, 83, when I moved to South Park. I went from uh, all black elementary to all black junior high to an all black high school. Got kicked out of that high school, went to a few other high schools. But, um, you know, to tell you a little bit about myself, pretty much raised in a fucked up environment. A lot of people were raised in a fucked up environment. You know. It's nothing, nothing to brag about. You know. I'm just very fortunate to still be here. Very fortunate. My childhood, it, uh, it was pretty wild. I was the youngest kid. My brother and sister were a year apart. And they waited about six or seven years and had me. So I had an older brother and an older sister. And I watched them. I looked at them grow up, you know, and, uh, you know, pretty much grew up pretty quick because I, I was watching them, you know. But uh, needless to say, uh, by the age of, of, of eight years old, I, I began to notice that I had a very good talent shooting pool. By the time I was nine years old, I was probably at my prime as far as shooting pool. I still got a good stick, but I never have the eye of the eagle like I had when I was nine. Now, I got some little bitches back there that are giggling and shit. I just want to say hi to them. And I want to continue with the interview. <laughs> All that street knowledge and stuff of slang and dope. When I got into music, I switched all my hustling skills and all my communication skills that I had onto the music part of it. And I went about it the same way. I hit hot spots and I sold my dope. I ran up to people. I told them to get a taste of my dope. I told them I had the best dope and it was all on CDs. And as soon as they got a taste of that CD, as soon as they tasted that dope, they wanted more of it. So they had to have the whole CD, you know. So uh, basically, <laughs> all my hustling skills on the streets, I placed them on beats. And uh, we just put the streets on beats. And uh, just blowing up, you know. Real recognizes the real. And, um, you know, you got a lot of haters, a lot of people that... You know, my secretary even tells me they're all on my voicemail, you know, talking. But uh, the secret to life is this. If you want to make it in life, you have to stay focused on what it is you have to get done. You have to stay focused on what you have to get accomplished. So when somebody comes up to me and says, Yo, Lowe's, they're hating on you, man. Guess what so-and-so said? I say, save it. Save it. Because it ain't no surprise to me. There's way more haters than there is players. All I can do is thank God that I'm a player, that he gave me my vision to be a player. Haters, they talk because they want to stab you in the back. But if they slam that knife in your back, and it just goes right through your back, and it and it doesn't even phase you, then you beat them. But when they stab you in the back and you turn around and you're like, ah, oh, like that, 
That'll be me listening to what a hater's saying. So basically, the 35, 45 seconds that what I, I would have wasted listening to what this hater said, I tell him to keep that. And I, I spend those 45 seconds listening to what that hater could have said. Instead, I spend that 45 seconds focusing on what I gotta do. And there's so many 45 seconds, so many times, so many hating. If you pay attention to it, it'll occupy all your fucking time. You understand? That's the secret to life. Don't worry about what the next door neighbor's talking about. Don't worry about what this guy's talking about. Don't worry about what that punk said. Because when you start paying attention to what haters are saying, you're letting them win. You're letting them take up your time. And life is time, and time is money. And uh, basically, that's all I gotta say about that, baby. Back when I turned 18, that's when crack really hit Houston hard. A lot of my buddies would put crack in their cigarettes and put crack in their joints. They call them cigarettes or primo. Everybody was smoking primos, you know, in Hillwood. Sunnyside, I was going to Worthen High School. Everybody smoking primos, you know. Everybody thought it was cool, it felt great. At least I'm not hitting a straight shooter, you know, we just smoking primos. We mix it with weed, it's cool to mix it with weed. A few months pass by, and everybody's got their mother's television on their shoulders. Everybody's pawning everything in their houses. Stealing all they can steal, you know, from their own families. Everybody's hooked on fucking crack. A lot of my friends fell victim to that. There, there's no concert in the world that could ever bring me more joy than that. Just spending time with my daughter. Um, my, my overall family, my brother, my sister, my father, my mother, my father, uh, my, my father, my sister, my brother, and my mother, uh, you know, they're, they're all a part of my, my company now. My father is the, uh, my father is the, uh, road manager. My sister is the, uh, promotional and booking agent. My sister-in-law, Linda Coy, she's my brother's wife. She's our bookkeeper, does a great job with our paperwork. Me and my brother are partners. We're, uh, equal partners uh, with Dope House Records. And uh, my brother was the, really the first person that initially had any faith in me. And uh, after about, after about, uh, After about three raids and about uh, six or seven deaths in my neighborhood, watching my boys come and go, everybody going to jail, you know, they had a whole neighborhood locked down, you know, everybody was, had indictments, and they were just letting us make our little money until it was the right time to come bust everybody, so I pulled out. And I talked to my brother about this rap thing, and uh, he backed me up. That was about five years ago. And now today, we're the, uh, we sell more rap than anybody in Texas. And uh, we're probably the fastest growing record company in the world. Uh, we're solid as a rock. We don't get no radio play, and we're still dominating. No major distribution, it's still dominating. It's, uh, it's something that's pretty much unheard of. Then coming from a Mexican rapper makes it even more unheard of. So uh, we're, we're achieving the unachievable. And uh, we're doing something that's never been done. And, uh, you know, uh, 
now that my family's behind me, everybody kind of jumped in after they seen how well it was doing and, and everything. And uh, now there ain't no stopping us, you know. The coys, you know, the coys are very powerful people. Boy, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> La vida es fina, le pido a Dios que me cuida, mi niña, mira. Mi jale es la calle, vendiendo libras que vienen del valle. Si mi madre me entendiera, mi familia va primera. Mi bandera era mi guerra, es guarewa, poste no cualquiera. Quiero que sepas que yo soy la muerte, si te escapas será pura suerte. Understand the touch, let it teach, show you how to turn a man to dust. LA to Nueva York is puro amor, for all who got love for el jugador. Houston to Nuevo York, me bandidos on the microphone, strike with chrome. True crime family, enemies pay, never die happily. Assault rifles, professional snipers, got my rival, and then they die. You don't like us, cool, but don't show it. Who wanna this killer slash poet i blow it up like nitroglycerin you just love talking out the pot you pissing me chill homes cause you ain't that hard fraud flossing in your own backyard i'm worldwide in the two-tone no ride your girl hide in my seat when you pass by that's my life hate a heartbreaker life take a smile now die later dope house records man what up blokes what's up with my no white she going for 13.5 cool let's start with 50 then come teach understand the touch let it teach show you how to turn a man to dust la to nueva york is puro amor for all who got love for el jugador hugh snow to nuevo leon three bandidos on the microphone strike with chrome true crime family enemies pay Never die happily. I'm in the spot where we import what you snort. Leaving court, going straight to the airport. I don't chase paper, paper chase me. Fez mag on the side, how I break free. Take heed to the roughneck tactics. I got you screaming worse than an actress in a horror flick he owe me for a brick in this biz it better be rolling thick hold it down son ain't no seeing us my nina bus another human being brush street genius so so serious you're fearing this deadly experience come teach understand the touch let it teach show you how to turn a man to dust la to nueva york is puro amor for all who got love for el jugador houston to nuevo leon Three bandidos on the microphone, strike with chrome. True crime family, enemies pay, never die happily. On the dead end street And watch them jump out boys Cause they rolling 10 deep Creepy crawl in the night Y'all know the deal On the motherfucking hill We all 
scrap to kill. Chill, hit licks in the wind, it never ceases. Get mad, cause they asking me for three dollar pieces. How the fuck I supposed to come up? Off a shite move. Run up on the 20 and come get your ass and nice.